All right, let's uh, circle back and uh, start with Jennifer. Okay. Um, I, I was arguing the other day with someone about, I was saying that slavery and things like that in the past were wrong. And he said, well, you can't judge by today's standards stuff people did back then. But morality is objective. And if no one questioned it at the time, how would you ever get to where you are now? Yep. Right. So people have this attitude, but you never would have gotten to where we are if nobody ever said anything. Yes. And, and, and look, knowledge is contextual. So if they really didn't have the knowledge that the slaves were human beings, right, then you could, then you could make an argument. They, they gained the knowledge and then they changed, but they did have the knowledge. And the knowledge existed, and there were anti-slavery advocates among the uh, among the founding fathers, and there were people making the argument against slavery at the time. This wasn't something that was completely um, mysterious. And indeed, slavery had been a part of human life forever. And the argument was never slaves are subhuman. The argument was, who cares? They lost the war. They're my slaves, right? I captured them. They're my slaves. But suddenly, in the 18th century, there's this concept of individual rights. And that doesn't work anymore. That idea that hey, I can't, they have rights. And, and Locke articulates that. And our, and our founders are taking these ideas seriously. And in a sense, you have to say they didn't really have an excuse. Now, they make arguments about if we freed all the slaves today, they would be worse off or stuff like that. But one gets a real sense that those are rationalizations. Those are and not. there were a lot of laws uh, designed to protect the rights of slaves before they emancipated them. Yes. So, you know, they could have protected them. They could have done things to protect them. But I think there are more rationalizations than anything else. So I do think you have to judge the founders. You, you know, you, you have to judge them within the context of the time. Yes. They were, they, we couldn't have had a United States probably if they had fought over this. There would have been, you know, the, the colonies would have splintered and it's not clear that we would have gained independence from the British. Um, so it's a compromise that maybe they had to make, but it would have been nice if they had been more assertive in clearly stating that this was a compromise they, was, uh, they were opposed to. Um, and so I think we, one, one does and should judge them, but also in the context, judge them given the time and judge them also uh, given their achievements. That is, yes, this was wrong, but, you know, they did set in motion everything that ultimately led to slavery, you know, going away. So, wasn't it's, uh, even, yeah. Wasn't there even Greeks that wrote against slavery way back, back then? Probably. I, I don't know, but I probably. I think there were. Yeah. Yeah, I know. But, but suddenly by the time of John Locke there's an understanding of individual as an individual. And indeed, the idea of enslaving white people it doesn't exist anymore, right? And now it's just blacks. Now it's just the other. Uh, but it didn't, you know, the idea of individual rights wasn't fully understood and didn't fully integrate. And what, I mean, women, I mean, they treated women the same way, right? Women didn't have rights in the sense that men had rights, didn't have rights to property, for example. So right to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness and property and pursuit of happiness was definitely, wasn't all, it was all men created equal and it wasn't women and it was men, white men. And, and Aristotle had that view of women. I mean, Aristotle had an awful view of women. So, uh, but I think by that point in time, they probably could have done better. And, and one should evaluate that and one should judge that and one should make judgment. It doesn't mean that eliminates or that wipes out their achievements and all the good that they did. Right. I was just trying to point out how you get from there to here. Someone has to stand up and with a different idea and challenge Absolutely. it. Yeah, vision. Some of the founders already did, and and it was and it evolves, and then you've got this incredibly courageous movement, which was the abolitionist movement. That was unbelievably courageous because they faced horrific odds, and they 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 fought for for individual rights for freedom and and they were successful reading about that is truly inspiring because because the odds that they faced were truly horrific what we need today 
what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. Using the super chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time. So I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, please take this opportunity. Go to yourownbookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com, your own book show. And, um, and and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to keep this uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next.